This is Top Accolade African News Update. I am Soy Bifa Jackridge. South Africans governing the African National Congress, ANC, has failed in a legal bid to stop a newly formed party backed by ex-president Jacob Zuma from running in May's general election. The Umonkoto We Suize MK party takes its name from the now disbanded armed wing of the ANC. It is thought that Mr. Zuma's backing of the MK could affect the ANC's support. The electoral court rejected the ANC's argument that the party had not met the official registration criteria criteria. The ANC has also instigated separate legal proceedings against the MK party, accusing it of copyright infringement. Some opinion polls are predicting that the ANC's vote share could fall below 50% for the first time in three decades in the 29th May election. Mr. Zuma appears to be drawing some support away from the party that has governed the country since 1994, especially in his home province of KwaZulu, Natal. He did not found the MK party, but through his weight behind it in December and has since been suspended from the ANC. Mr. Zuma once served in the ANC's MK, which was formed to help in the fight against apartheid and white minority rule. He was South Africa's president for nine years from 2009, but forced from power and replaced by current president Cyril Ramaphosa in part over corruption allegations which Zuma denies. Following his backing of the MK party, the ANC accused Zuma of debasing the proud history of armed struggle against the apartheid regime through the opportunistic use of military symbolism. They also said the MK only exists to erode the support base of the ANC. A Nigerian Muslim cleric has been summoned over his call for talks and amnesty for criminal gangs known locally as bandits, local media reports. Ski Ahmad Gumi, a former army captain based in Northern Kaduna State, has frequently offered to mediate between local authorities and the gangs, blamed for rising cases of kidnapping in the country. Recently, the cleric is reported to have offered to dialogue with kidnappers for the release of the dozens of pupils who were captured by gunmen earlier this month from a school in the northwestern town of Koriga. But Kaduna State Governor Uba Sani said Mr. Gumi was not involved in the safe return of the pupils. Information Minister Mohammed Idris and Mande said security agencies had invited Mr. Gumi for questioning, noting that the cleric is not above the law. When you make remarks, especially those that bother on our national security, it is incumbent on our national security to think further, and they are doing just that, Mr. Idris was quoted as saying. Mr. Gumi has previously claimed to have met bandit leaders who abandoned their kidnapping activities. Rwanda's lower house of parliament has passed a bill that proposes stricter regulations to protect forests in the country. The bill forbids the harvesting, use, and trade of immature trees. It additionally requires Rwandans to obtain permits from authorities before cutting any tree, including privately planted ones. The bill also proposes harsher penalties for those who cut trees before they mature or without a license, with fines of up to 3 million Rwanda francs, that is $2,300 or 1,800 euros. This law aims to further preserve the environment and prevent the effect of climate change. The lower house of parliament said after passing the bill on Monday, Rwanda also aims at using the bill to sell carbon credits. Pro-government New Times new website reported last year, citing environment minister Jayan Diak Mujawa Mariwa, but the proposed law is unpopular among many Rwandans who view it as an inconvenience that will make it difficult to access wood for cooking, construction, and other common uses. Rwanda's tree conservation efforts have grown the country's forest cover from 10.7% in 2010 to 30.4% in 2022, according to the Environment Ministry. Zambia has agreed to revise the deal to restructure more than $3.5 billion, that is $2.7 billion of its international bonds with private investors. Under the agreement, creditors will forgo $840 million in claims and Zambia will continue with an ongoing $2.5 billion IMF cash flow relief program. The deal, the deal follows months of tension between China and other creditors. Over the proposed terms of agreement, Zambia had borrowed billions 
of dollars after the COVID pandemic to cushion the economy. President Hakande Hichilema has hailed the deal as a historic milestone. It is an important step in the country's effort to restructure its debt after defaulting in 2020. Monday's development followed a series of delays that had made Zambia a symbol of the failure of a G20 initiative for faster solutions to debt crisis in poorer countries. The initiative, known as the G20 Common Framework, was launched in 2020 to provide relief to low-income countries dealing with huge debts. The implementation of the deal would make Zambia the first country to achieve debt restructuring under the G20 framework. That is the size of Top Accolade African News Updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen.